Number 26, which one is the propagation step? Propagation step involves a free radical and a non-free radical to react and then it creates a free, another free radical and a non-free radical. So, okay, and importantly, there should be no hydrogen radicals involved during the reactions. So there are some that we can actually um, eliminate straight away. A, you see that a hydrogen radical that should not be considered. And C, there's involvement of hydrogen free radical. Right, that will be out also. So we're down to B and D. B, we use up one free radical and we create another free radical. So this is propagation. D, two free radicals combine to get us a non-free radical. This is actually termination. So answer is B. Twenty-seven. Which one will not react with the molecule? So, two four DMPH, it will actually react with this ketone group, give a yellow precipitate. So that will react. Phalanx reagent, there's no aldehyde groups in this molecule, so there will both there will be no reaction with phalanx reagent. Hydrogen bromide will be reacting with your CC double bond. Sodium boron hydride is a reducing agent. It will actually reduce your ketone to your secondary alcohol. Twenty-eight. We are given an example of hydrogen cyanide adding on to a carbonyl group. One of the H goes to here and the CN very importantly is the CN joins to the carbon holding the O. So we are given another reaction to consider. We have this negative ion which is equivalent to the CN here. And then what can we do? Or which one of the following can be formed from an aldehyde and this ion? So this ion if we, I were to draw it out, it will look like this. A negative charge on this side, CH2CO or CH3. And I draw out the four options here for easy comparison. So we look at each one on its own. The first one, option A, importantly is we look at the carbon that holds the OH. This is where the new ion was actually joined I was had joined to. So this carbon is the one that is of interest to us. So if I draw it out, it looks like this. And we try to reverse everything. So originally it looks it came from it came from a molecule that looks like this. And then if we were to reconstruct it back, the H was or not there in the first place and there was a double bond here. So this is an aldehyde, but the issue is this is not the ion that was joined that we want. We want an ion that has a CH2. So it's missing a CH2 here. So option A is out. Option B, again, we are interested in this carbon, the carbon that holds the OH. And that means the ion that was joining to the aldehyde was this ion. Okay, and we do a comparison. It seems very much like the one we want. But we have to check. You see that the direction of the O is different. See, the, the oxygen is away from the carbon that's holding the negative charge. Whereas the oxygen here is next to the carbon that's holding the negative charge. So this was the ion that was involved, which is not the ion that's, that's in the question. So this is out. Option C. So this is where it is joined to. This is the ion that was created. And we can see that this holds the negative charge. So 
So if we do a comparison, this looks exactly like the ion that we are we are looking for. And then we double check the original molecule that was being attacked. We will reconstruct it back. This is where the double bond is. And the hydrogen wasn't there. So this is an aldehyde. So answer is C. What about D? This was the ion and the negative charge. So based on the ions, it looks like the same as the one we want. Then we look at the original molecule. We get rid of the H. We form back the double bond O. We can see that this is actually not an aldehyde. This is a ketone. The question actually wants an aldehyde. Right, so we are done with option C. Twenty nine. We have this molecule. How can we produce this molecule from the four options we have? We add first of all add sodium cyanide and then hydrolyze it. The sodium cyanide, the cyanide CN will be attached to or to be replace the bromines. So we put the CN to replace the bromines for the four options and then we change the CN to COOH. In this case, the answer is B. Okay. So if I replace the CN here, this is what we get. And then this CN under hy after hydrolyze, you become COOH. Which is the same structure as the one here. Okay. Although you do need to rearrange the bit of the, the orientation. Mm. But they are the same. If you try for the other structures, you will not get the same structure as the one on top. 30 we have this molecule and then after hydrolyzing it we focus on the ester bonds we break the ester bonds here the one that contains the double bond O will be the acid group and this side will be the alcohol group and then we reconstruct it back this is our alcohol we put a H here our acid will have a OH which give us these two products option D number 31 you can reason out the answer for 31 we have one mole of monomers and then we polymerize it so you can visualize each monomer as one brick so we have 6 times 10 to the power 23 units of monomers some of them will join together to form the polymer so this one is the polymer okay, some might not but what we have eventually will be less than 6 times 10 to the power 23 units of polymer because they are, they are grouped up so we can theoretically form one as long as we form less than one more of polymer right, the answer is acceptable we will not get one mole of polymer because that will mean that none of them have actually joined up so any numbers that's less than one more is acceptable 32 which physical properties are due to hydrogen bonding? Hydrogen bonding in water allows it to have stronger intermolecular attraction than H2S, which only has permanent dipole permanent dipole interaction. So that's one. It floats on water because ice has an open structure. The hydrogen bonding means that the the molecules have to align themselves this means that the structure is pretty open so it will be a less dense um, less dense substance than water where the angles are from a molecule to another molecule need not be maintained to be tetrahedral so open structure means there's less dense 
that means ice will float the bond angle is 104 this is true but this is not due to hydrogen bonding this is due to the lone pairs there are two lone pairs in oxygen and two bond pairs in hydrogen so they are bent to be 104 this is property within a molecule not between water molecules Thirty-three. Which equilibria will have no units in the KP? I written out all, all uh, three reactions with their ratios. I just write out one of the KP for example. SO3, you have to square and then divided by SO2 square and O2. You can see that eventually, if we cancel out the, we can't cancel out all the units because the power on top is two different from the power below which is 3 so eventually there will be leftover units either on top or below if the ratio if the numbers are not the same so the first one will have a unit the second one you can see that we have a square on top and one times one below or rather a square below Okay, so these units will cancel each other out. Same for the third example. 1-1 one, one on top and 1-1 one, one below. The units will cancel out. So 2 and 3 will have no units. Thirty-four. Why does a mixture react high at a higher temperature faster than at a lower temperature foreign kelvins? Because if you remember your Boltzmann distribution, at higher temperature you have more portion of molecules with effective um, energy. So one is correct. When they are at a higher temperature, they move faster. They have more kinetic energy. And then when they move faster, there's a higher chance of them colliding. So the collision frequency is higher. Activation energy doesn't change with the temperature unless we introduce a catalyst or we take away a catalyst. So statement 3 is wrong. 35. Adding lime to ammonium sulfate. This is a reaction where we have an ammonium salt reacting with alkali, base and ammonium salt, we get salt, water, ammonia, gas. So we we'll get calcium sulfate and ammonia. Thirty six. Sodium, bo uh, sodium bromide with corn sulfuric acid. So first reaction is an acid reaction. We have NaHSO4 and HBr. But your HBr subsequently will be oxidized to Br2. So we get hydrogen bromide as a product of the reaction. Sulfuric acid is not oxidized to sulfur dioxide. Sulfuric acid is actually reduced. Can check the oxidation state plus 6 decrease to plus 4 for sulfur. Bromide ions are reduced to bromine. Bromide ions, bromide is oxidized to bromine, increase in oxidation state. So only statement 1 is correct. 37 SN2 reaction. I'll just use one as an example. We have a, a chloromethane. And your, elect your nucleophile is your o OH minus. If it's SN2, there will be bond breaking and bond forming at the same time. So, and you require two molecules to collide or two ions to collide. That's where the two comes from, SN2. Right? That's what it means. And in the transition state, the carbon is actually joined to five at the same time 
and because it hasn't fully formed the bond for the incoming one and hasn't fully broken the bond for the one that's leaving. Thirty-eight chlorine free radical is formed when there is a homolytic fission. Electrons are split equally. For example, here we have a chlorine uh, molecule. We we'll pass, we we'll break it evenly so that we get two chlorine radicals. So it's homolytic fission. Statement one is wrong. Single unpaired electron is correct, and essentially is the same as a chlorine atom. Thirty nine. What can be demonstrated by the above apparatus? Oxidation of ethanol will require an oxidizing agent, which is not reflected here. So one will be wrong. Okay, anyway, even if there is an oxidizing agent, your ethanol, which forms ethanoic acid, both of them will dissolve in the water. You will not collect any gas. Two, dehydration, you'll get your ethene, which will be, which will be collected here. Cracking, you get your smaller alkanes and alkenes, which will be collected here also. So 2 and 3 are correct. 40. 4 carbon atoms. The best way is to draw and we calculate the MR. Saturated non-cyclic. Diol. Diol. Diol means 2 alcohol groups. So I put 4 carbons and I put 2 alcohol groups. It doesn't matter where the alcohol groups are. When we add up the MR, we get 90. For this one, we want 88. So the first one is wrong. Secondary alcohol with an aldehyde. So I'll draw four carbons. I'll put the alcohol on the second carbon to make it secondary. And then I'll put an aldehyde group. And we get C4H8O2. MR is 88. So this is correct. Primary alcohol containing a ketone, so repeat the process, put the alcohol on the first carbon, primary, ketone, form here, it is also C4H8O2, like just now, you will have an MR of 88 also.